Hello everybody, today we will start with the uh, new um, module and in but course of the introduction to solidification processing. This new module will cover up the solidification of the welding and additive manufacturing processes. So, the subtopics I will try to cover in this particular module, these are the solidification in fusion welding, we will start with that. Then try to discuss the oil microstructure and try to link with the solidification behavior in the different types of the welding processes. And then we will shift to the solidification in additive manufacturing process. I know that you additive manufacturing process basically will try to look into the additive manufacturing of metallic materials which is having the close relation with the uh, fusion welding processes. Then we will do some kind of the demonstration of the oiling and additive manufacturing processes and of course uh, here in this demonstration we will try to look into the what are the solidification front moves, moves uh, based on the heat transfer analysis. And then finally, the simulation of the solidification for oiling and additive manufacturing processes also we will try to cover up in this particular uh, module to better understanding of the, the oiling process in oiling, uh, the solidification processing in oiling and additive manufacturing process. So, once we start with the uh, solidification in fusion oiling process, I know you know the what is the uh, fusion oiling process. In fusion oiling process what happens? There is a metallic material is there and there is a uh, over, over the met metallic material. Some particular heat source it can be the laser, it can be the arc, electric arc will be generated and it will try to melt the molten material. And once the at the same time there is a movement of the arc from one position to another position. So, at this uh, particular sequence the molten metal will try to solidify and uh, get the solidified structure and that will finally decide the microstructure associated with the any kind of the oiling process. So, actually there is some uh, relation or maybe some uh, <coughs> resemblance there between the continuous casting and the oiling process. We will try to show that the what way they are uh, different or what way uh, they are having some similarities and what we can explain this both together by looking into the only one kind of the uh, equation, the same heat, trans heat transfer equation we, we can utilize in both the cases. So, in principle the when with the application of an electric arc and uh, over a uh, initially the, uh, the cold material then it is heats up by the uh, arc and melts it and after melting when it, the arc moves from one position to another position. So, there means this subsequently will to uh, solidify. Now, in this case the base metal actually behaves initially as a heat sink specifically if the thickness of the metal is very high. So, they once they act as a heat sink as compared to the applied electric or the energy thermal energy uh, on this uh, during the oiling process. So, once melt it then gradually the nuclei actually form um, specifically starting with the oxide free zone surface of the melt back of the base metal. Back of the base metal means it is like that suppose the it is moving oiling process moving on particular direction direction it is create this kind of the oil profile the this is the molten zone and it is in liquid state once moving. The back side usually in the back part this part the actually the nucleation will start and that gradually the solid we can start here and once heat source moves away from this molten pool then it should start spraying from the boundary the solidification start and the, at the center it will the at the end at the end point the solidification exactly ends at this at the uh, at this middle at this at this particular position. So, solidification starts from the boundary, but mostly it starts from this thing and in this particular zone you will get the the height of the Mosi zone will be much more or maybe span of the Mosi zone will be much more uh, this particular at the trailing edge of the welding process. So, in principle the nucleus form the free surface oxide free surfaces and specifically in the melt back of the base material. So, in since uh, there is a melt has approximately the same composition of the base material. So, therefore, in that case the when the nucleation start the weightability um, weighting of the base metal is actually very efficient in the sense that uh, weighting angle is almost 0. So, we know if you remember that when you start with the heterogeneous nucleation process over the existing surface it starts the 
creating the this nucleus the start solidifier. So, here this part will be a uh, very less. So, if the uh, weighting angle is almost 0 that means, it becomes the nucleation starts almost no nucleation barrier. So, no uh, uh, free energy uh, almost the, uh, the, the what is the energy barrier required for the nucleation process is actually very low if the weighting angle is very close to 0. So, starting with this thing this thing the nucleation starts this uh, uh, with almost 0 weighting angle or I can say the almost no uh, energy barrier and in that case and at the same time this case uh, the constitutional degree of constitutional supercooling also very low. So, then solid solidification in this particular situation the solidification starts at the trailing edge and usually occurs epitaxially, epitaxially means that nucleus having the same lattice structure and uh, paper orientation of the grain will be one uh, particular uh, direction. Now, with this epitaxial growth of the metal occurs one particular direction during the oiling process and of course, we can observe the initially the temperature gradient is the very steep temperature gradient exists at the solid liquid interface and associated with the low degree of constitution that we have already seen the low degree of uh, constitutional supercooling, but steep temperature gradient exists at the solid liquid interface. So, this is the uh, typical characteristics of a fusion rolling process when you will try to understand the solidification associated with the fusion rolling process. If we move further the actual, but actual case that the thermal gradient or temperature gradient on the oiling uh, uh, in a particular oiling process are different and it also depends on the types of the oiling process and what is the plate thickness. So, that means very thin sheet or very thick sheet in these two cases the temperature gradient can vary. Also, in case of arc welding, in case of laser welding or other submerged arc welding, the at the same time the temperature gradient will also be different uh, during the solidification process. So, here we have observed that GTAW that means gas metal arc welding is usually performed in case of the very thin sheet. In that case, it is associated with the steeper temperature gradient as compared to the, the submerged arc welding because submerged arc welding process usually occurs in a very very high thickness material or thickness of the plates is very high in that case uh, the uh, in particular case the submerged arc welding is applicable. So, therefore, in GTAW for thin sheet and submerged arc welding for a thick sheet the temperature gradient can be different. Now, with this the different temperature gradient actually influence the solidification behavior in the different way and we will try to uh, explain this thing. Uh, if you remember the we, we always we try to explain the solidification behavior in terms of the this uh, solidification parameters G and R. So, based on that we can explain the, the solidification behavior in case of the oiling process, but overall if we see the oiling process it is actually is a very dynamic process since the heat source moves continuously one particular direction. So, therefore, there might be that the constant temperature the maximum temperature gradient is actually constantly changing in the direction depending upon the movement of the heat source that means, it how fast it is moving or how slow the heat source is moving based on that the maximum values of the temperature gradient is actually changes in case of the uh, oiling process. So, this phenomena also influence the the in the solidification behavior of the oiling process it is it can be explained like that. In this particular since there is a continuous changes of the temperature gradient it actually hampers the, the growing of the columnar crystals because the growth of the columnar crystal is actually follow the, the direction which direction there existence of the steepest temperature gradient. So, at the steepest temperature gradient at the same time it will try to follow the paper uh, orientation paper growth direction. So, each and every material is having particular preferred uh, uh, growth direction depending upon their crystal structure. So, it will maintaining these two it sometimes there may be the possibility is that it may change the the columnar crystal can change the, the growth direction. So, therefore, sudden change in the growth direction is influencing the uh, grain structure or grain morphology associated with the, the fusion oiling process. But overall if we analyze the uh, fusion oiling process. So, definitely grain structure affects the uh, final mechanical properties and at the same time the grain structure also that formation of the grain structure is basically very much linked with the susceptibility to the 
cracking formation and the uh, that is usually called the solidification cracking usually forms and that is associated with what kind of the grain structure is formed during the fission rolling process and also at the same time it influence the mechanical properties of the uh, welded structure. So, therefore, that is why we uh, it is a it is a very important to understand the solidification behavior and the uh, grain growth happens in, uh, in during the uh, welding process. Now, once we started with this we already explained that there is epitaxial growth occurs uh, at the, the fusion boundary and that is specifically the autogenous fusion welding process. So, what happens the molten metal suppose here if you look into this uh, this is the uh, this oil pool uh, boundary. So, oil pool boundary and uh, this is the uh, uh, oiling, uh, oiling direction. So, therefore, uh, this uh, from the boundary there is a growth occurs and this uh, epitaxial growth occurs one particular direction. So, here you can see that there is a columnar structure occurs in the, the paper direction and this paper direction is basically 100. So, usually uh, for FCC or BCC crystal structure the paper orientation direction is 100. So, along the 100 this direction this usually try to uh, uh, grow one particular direction until and unless there is some other uh, mechanism that interrupt the growth of the um, this the columnar structure. So, once the molten metal is contact with the base metal definitely. So, in this case uh, there is no uh, shape because base metal and the molten metal is the same, uh, but there is just some boundary is there the liquid phase liquid molten metal and the solid base metal. So, therefore, when the uh, molten metal is contact with the solid base metal in that case growth initiates at the boundary. So, basically solid liquid interface or solid liquid boundary. Uh, the growth will start and it proceeds towards the oil center. So, starting from the boundary it moves for the oil center. So, the solidification to for the oil center occurs at the end and in this case when it moves one particular direction that is the some kind of easy growth direction or paper orient uh, paper um, in particular paper orientation then this is called the epitaxial nucleation and growth. So, epitaxial nucleation and growth the nucleation occurs the boundary boundary and it grows one particular direction. So, that is actually and that is the understanding of the epitaxial growth associated with the uh, welding process. But if in particular welding process we use the filler material for example, gas metal arc welding process we use the filler material or some there are some other welding processes we to try to utilize any kind of the filler material. So, there is a some difference in the when they using the filler metal the oil composition actually changes metal composition may changes as compared to the base metal. So, in that case their solidification mechanism can be different and that actually leads to the different crystal structure of the oil and the base metal. So, there is a difference in the crystal structure for the oil and base metal we can expect the two uh, different types of the crystal structure. So, in that case epitaxial growth is no longer possible for the oiling process when you try to use the any kind of the filler material. It means that epitaxial growth is possible when you try to do the autogenous welding process without using any kind of the filler material. So, in that case, but when there is a no epitaxial growth, so there is a new grains actually form nucleus at the fusion boundary. So, every time the fusion boundary new uh, grains in uh, nucleus and we can expect more or less kind of the equiax kind of the structure is formed or maybe uh, dendritic arms is the length of the primary dendritic arms in this particular case is very low as compared to the epitaxial growth. Now, during solidification of course, there is a grain strain to grow perpendicular to the oil pool boundary because then always try to grow if you see this, this is the oil, oil pool boundary. So, it will try to grow the perpendicular to that. So, because the calculation shows that the steepest temperature gradient exists perpendicular to the boundary. So, that is why it will try to prefer or maybe try to grow in this steepest temperature gradient uh, usually occurs or maybe I can say the maximum temperature gradient in the uh, in this uh, that is normal to the boundary we observe and along this particular direction the growth grains growth try to occur. Along with this thing columnar dendrites also try to follow try to tends to grow also easy growth direction. Easy growth direction is depending upon the crystal structure the easy growth direction is uh, defined. So, 
both are important here. So, one is the easy growth direction, the grain try to grow or at the same time the we need to look into the maximum temperature gradient exist. So, along this direction the columnar grain will try to grow. Now, if you look into the easy growth direction for the different types of the metals we can see in case of the FCC structure uh, easy growth direction equal to 100. Uh, this kind of the metal we can observe the aluminum alloy and austenitic stainless steel the, um, the easy growth direction 100. Similarly, for BCC structure also body centered cubic structure the easy growth direction also 100 and that is corresponds to the carbon steel ferritic stainless steel both we can observe the easy growth direction 100. Similarly, hexagonal close pack structure ACP structure. So, easy growth direction equal to 1 0 minus 1 0 this particular direction and you can observe titanium magnesium uh, they try to follow the easy growth direction in this particular direction, but in case of the body center tetragonal BCD structure the tin we can observe in this part their easy growth direction equal to actually 1 1 0. So, we mean to say that the solidification occurs you will try to follow the uh, perpendicular the oil pool boundary because at this particular direction the steepest temperature gradient or maybe maximum temperature gradient exists and at the same time it will try to in gradient will try to grow in the easy growth direction and that easy growth direction decided by the type of the crystal structure for this particular material. Now, once you understand the basics very basics with the, uh, the solidification behavior in case of the oiling process fusion oiling process. Now, there is a role of the uh, oiling parameters also influence the uh, oiled microstructure or their growth direction. So, a very uh, uh, simple way we can understand that that uh, what is the oiling parameter specifically in we are talking about at this moment the oiling speed. So, high oiling speed will try to kind of the teardrop safe uh, in a uh, in a or kind of the elongated oil pool usually forms at the high oil uh, oil speed. So, I am talking about the oil pool means the, the molten molten pool zone. So, that molten shape of the molten pool zone can be is the elongated looks like elongated oil pool or kind of the teardrop shape easily uh, form at specific relatively very high oiling speed. And other if it is low oiling speed it is a more or less kind of the elliptical kind of the shape it will try to uh, try to produce. So, when the oil, oil pool or melt pool shape are different that actually influence the solidified structure also in this case and if we analyze this what can be the solidified structure in these two cases it can be like that. So, if uh, too much of high oiling speed will basically teardrop safe. So, teardrop safe means is basically long uh, zone uh, this kind of the will be there pool will be there suppose it is moving this. Hmm. So, here teardrop safe is there uh, in this case the because solidification will start at the boundary and it will gradually move to the oil center. So, it is something like that from boundary to the oil center almost having the same almost similar kind of the temperature gradient exists. So, once there is a similar temperature or similar kind of the temperature gradient exists, then the solidification is uh, it will try to follow uh, this kind of the that means almost the perpendicular that uh, to the uh, boundary perpendicular to the boundary and more or less straight. So, here you can see that is a this already solidified structure this already solidified structure and it moves in this direction. So, almost straight towards the center this is the dendritic arm will try to produce or he in this case it is a normal to the uh, boundary normal to the uh, oil pool boundary and towards the center it is almost straight. Now, little less the oiling speed, but we put in the category of the high speed of the oiling process, but uh, relatively low in that case it will try to produce not exactly straight, but close to the center line it will try to some curvature will try to create. So, it entirely depends on the, the two factors one is the easy growth direction combining these two and the steepest temperature gradient uh, during this process, but the very close to the center line the temperature gradient is actually reduces. So, when there is a very slow speed the low oiling speed the steep maximum the temperature gradient near the boundary is or up to certain zone of the boundary it is almost uh, this it is almost uh, at which point the temperature gradient is almost constant up to that point it is more or less creates kind of the uh, dendritic arm almost straight. But when there is a change some 
uh, or near the center when uh, at particular point when there will be the temperature gradient will be lower, there will try to produce close to the equiox kind of the structure. So, here we can see that both the differences we can observe here. Columnar gains are straight normal to the oil pool boundary of course, the, it is straight up to that point when there is a more or less same uh, the temperature gradient becomes constant. But at the low oil link speed the trailing boundary of the elliptical shaped. So, in this case uh, oil pool is very curved. So, in this case we can expect that it says the very curvature towards the uh, towards the center because in this curvature means there is a variation of the temperature gradient towards the center. But when the uh, at the center point this almost temperature gradient more or less at the lower at the low as compared to the other part and almost constant the at any point the temperature gradient remains lower side as well as more or less same. So, here you will try to form kind of the create the equiox kind of the structure. So, it means that the depending upon the welding speed we can expect the uh, different kind of the uh, structure one cases we can we can see that uh, almost straight columnar structure and other cases we can expect the the near the center it will try to make the curvature and and all at the center when the uh, uh, um, then more uh, temperature gradient more or less almost uh, similar then it will try to create the equiox kind of the uh, structure here is a more clear way we can understand that how this welding speed actually influence the uh, solidified uh, welding solidification. So, increase the welding speed actually changes the elliptical shape to the PR shape here you can see how the shape changes from elliptical to the PR shape by using the uh, welding speed. So, growing crystal try to follow the definitely the steepest temperature gradient it will try to follow these things, but PR shape will, will maintain fairly constant thermal gradient. So, this is the oil pool shape at very high speed. So, more or less toward the center it is a almost uh, constant temperature gradient will try to follow. So, that is why it is always the uh, almost straight to the boundary it will create the structure. But here we see there is a the temp it is may not be able to maintain the constant temperature gradient. So, maybe uh, when there is a temperature gradient changes gradually it is try to make uh, slope much more towards the center. So, at this particular zone the temperature gradient is more or less the different from the initial temperature gradient. So, there is a gradually continuously changing the temperature gradient then it actually makes the pattern of the, the dendritic arm associated with the low speed of the welding process. Now, definitely try to link that growth rate it is not necessary the growth rate of the boundary and the all zone of the uh, component will be the same. There might be some differences growth rate differences also will be there associated with any kind of the fusion welding process. So, let us see we will try to understand uh, try to relate it the growth rate uh, with the welding speed here. So, suppose there is a welding speed is V here for example and in this case definitely the crystal growth will must occur such that it will be able to keep pace that means uh, try to accommodate the, the welding speed. So, I mean to say that uh, the welding front will be moving just keep on understand keep on maintaining the the welding speed also. So, I mean to say that at steady state situation we can observe that one particular shape of the oil pool at any steady state and if you take follow the any point of the during the oiling process for a long length bar if you follow take the any point it will try to find out the almost near shape of uh, same shape of the oil pool. It means that it is adjusting or accommodating the the solidification rate along with the movement of the, the, the arc. So, that means oil speed. So, the solidification will try to adjust always the maintaining the adjustment with the uh, welding speed. It will try to maintain this thing that it is we say that is the keep pace with the welding speed it will try to maintain. So, in that say suppose one particular uh, situation the growth rate is basically assume R. So, growth rate is equal to assume R and the condition must be that growth rate. So, growth rate is equal to the cos theta that is the velocity. So, at the maximum position if you see that suppose it, it, it will follow this figure. So, this is moving on this particular way. So, here the growth rate this front at this point this growth rate is should be equivalent to the. So, here r should be equal to v, but in other position 
say uh, this particular position here we have seen the other position one angle theta, angle theta this is the velocity vector and this is angle theta and suppose this is the growth rate, growth rate in, the, in this particular direction because this growth rate direction here the uh, we can see that is normal to the uh, this uh, oil pool. So, in this particular direction growth rate we can see that simply we can say r equal to cos theta into v. So, it means that since cos theta equal to less than 1, so the growth rate the although oiling speed is v, but growth rate at the different position will be different. So, growth rate at the on the bound over the boundary at the different position growth rate will be different and here at this point it will be equivalent to the equal to the value when theta equal to 0 then growth rate is equal to equal to the values of the that oiling speed. But remaining part uh, of this thing uh, the oil pool the growth rate will be gradually increasing from uh, decreasing from center point towards the uh, this boundary. So, here the growth rate will be the minimum. So, when theta equal to 0 it will be the maximum when theta equal to 90 degree it will be the uh, the minimum that means growth rate equal to 0. So, here it is 0 ideally and it is the maximum uh, oiling speed in between it is varying the less than the oil growth rate will be the less than the uh, oiling speed. So, therefore, we can observe easily that there is a continuously changing of the growth rate at the different position and here we see the oiling speed or the speed of the movement or isotherm is definitely constant because at any point. So, this, this is the isotherm it is create any and the steady state the isotherm at the different position will be the same that means the oil pool size will be the same at the different position and therefore, the we can say isotherm means that define the say uh, melting isotherm means the solid liquid interface the phase suppose this is the solid liquid interface so in, in the uh, liquid and other about say the solid. So, that interface shape size interface will be the same at the quasi uh, steady state situation. So, in that case uh, that will be able to achieve if we keep pace with the oiling speed the growth rate. So, and of course, when the observe the growth rate from one uh, this this position to theta 2, theta 0 to 90 degree with this variation the growth rate is actually varying from the minimum value to the maximum value here and that that means theta equal to 92, theta equal to 0 degree. So, minimum to maximum values of the growth rate we can observe. So, adjust itself therefore, crystal growth must continuously adjust itself at the growth proceeds towards the central line. So, growth proceeds from towards the central line. So, growth rate has to be adjusted and that we observe there is a variable growth rate uh, we can see in the oiling process. So, when there is a growth rate will be variable. So, it actually influence the solidified structure also uh, in a oiling process. We can see further also solidification rate is the greatest at theta equal to 0 that means at the central line and it is equivalent to in this case it is equivalent to rate equal to welding velocity, but lowest at the edge when theta is the maximum. So, when theta equal to maximum we can say that r equal to growth rate equal to 0 when theta equal to maximum and theta equal to 90 degree in ideal situation. So, therefore, initial low rates of the crystal growth are associated with relatively the planar solidification. If the crystal growth rate is very low initial low rate of the crystal that actually associated to the planar solidification front. But when the growth rate actually increases the uh, uh, growth rate increases in the R increases the R growth rate is very low is a planar solidification. We have observed the different solidification mode also and but when R is gradually increases it from planar to uh, then cellular and then cellular to cellular dendrite and then equiax dendrite that kind of the structure is gradually. Uh, the changes uh, we can see that changes to cellular and then cellular dendritic stru structure we can observe. So, therefore, completion of the welding solidifications and corresponds to the highest growth rate we can see and we observe uh, during uh, in a, um, in a exp uh, one particular experiment or example we can see that what way the growth rate actually varies, but before that we can see that this is the oil pool and see that this initial part is the basically it is a you can see it is a try to keep pace with the normal to the oil pool boundary this is the usual uh, growth the columnar growth direction, but it is a columnar structure. But at the center 
uh, you can see this is the trailing edge, this is the front part of the welding process and the trailing edge when there is a almost uniform temperature gradient and of course, the temperature gradient is lower than this part, uh, that part is try to create some kind of the equiex dendritic structure it will try to form. An example here you can see that measurement of the crystal growth in the stainless steel as a function of the percentage of the weld solidified. See that it is a growth rate r millimeter per second and percentage of the solidification y for example, this direction x, x along the x axis along the y axis growth rate and it is a, a 304 test stainless steel 1 millimeter thickness and bead we observe the bead width is around 4 to 5 millimeter width that means bead width means this extend is around 4 to 5 millimeter ok and we observe that uh, this different welding speed 10 centimeter per minute 16 32 and 64 if you see that curve nature of the curve is almost same initially at a very initial phase the when the percentage of solidification is very low growth rate is also low growth rate is very close to 1 or maybe less than 1 I can see that in this case for example, the triangle say I say that 32 centimeter per minute we take pick up this in this case growth rate is this 1 ok 1 millimeter per second. But when the solid 40 percent of the part is the solidified we can expect the growth rate is around 2. So, that means gradually increasing here and it is a more or less constant with the solidification one uh, growth rate is more or less constant uh, when large amount is the solidified. But of the particular position we can see that it is a almost in this case the albus equiex almost which part is growth rate is more or less constant in that particular part we can expect the equiex uh, zone equiex zone and that means the equiex equiex zone there in, in this particular zone uh, the when growth rate is more or less constant uh, here you can observe uh, so it is uh, at this particular zone is the growth rate is but that it means that first it will the solidification is solidified this part and then it solidified at the center part and that create at the latter stage when the growth rate and this thing and here but it may happen so that very close to at the uh, close to the end of the solidification the complete solidification the all liquid into the solid. So, in that part there is a sudden increase in that there is a uh, quickly increment that means that part is the it is a large part it is a quickly solidified this uh, in this uh, particular zone. So, here the growth rate is very high. So, that growth rate is very very long uh, very high at the last stage of the solidification. So, this is the usual uh, observation associated with the uh, solidification uh, or the maybe geometry of the crystal growth associated with the fusion welding process. We do further. Uh, look into the geometry of the crystal growth here you can see some analogy they think that very high welding speed it is associated with the predominantly transition from predominantly columnar crystals to the equiex growth. So, definitely the columnar structure to the equiex growth is actually occurs at the final stage of the solidification and usually associated with the high welding speed this transition usually ob observed. But in this case use, uh, this transition usually occurs from the columnar to the equiex and the last stage of the solidification and that is more close to the amounts of the segregation present associated to the final stage because we know that segregation is usually occurs at the final stage of the solidification. So, there is a segregation is mainly occurs when there is a uh, uh, over the space the concentration depend the solute con concentration depends as much more. So, that actually prone to occur the kind of the, the segregation. So, that is why segregation is the one of the it might be associated with this thing at the final stage of the solidification and we observe the final stage of the solidification there is a the large difference may happen although the solute concentration of the liquid phase and the solute concentration of the solid phase. So, that promotes the formation of the segregation. Now, if if this if this is the situation along with the coupled with the low thermal shallow thermal gradient at this stage. So, shallow if you observe at the center point we say that the temperature gradient actually gradually reduces towards the center from the oil pool boundary. So, from boundary that means to the center the temperature gradient actually reduces. So, 
the center point when you try to produce equx try to promote the equx kind of the structure one driving force is the it will try to create some kind of the segregation tendency at this part at the same time the temperature shallow temperature gradient thermal gradient or temperature gradient at the last stage also occurs and at the same time that actually associated to the high degree of constitutional supercooling all are favoring to form or is this all are driving forces to form the equx uh, the dandruff dendritic growth is basically large and try to promote the form of the equx structure so therefore it should be noted that the general dendritic and cellular substructure in the oil pool will try to be at the very finer that means whatever the cellular structure or dendritic structure is from the equus dendritic structure is what but overall grain structure is usually finer in case of the welding as compared to the casting process because overall we can see that the cooling rate is much more higher in case of the welding process as compared to the casting process so comparatively high solidification rate we can expect during the solidification of the welding process as compared to the casting process so therefore uh, we can observe uh, this fine structure in case of the welding as compared to the cast component and we see the high welding speed or the thick base metal so welding speed is very high or the thickness of the metal is very high in that case large rate of solidification is we can observe rate of the solidification is very high and that will try to produce very fine structure finest structure associated with this condition so finest structure means it means that if the welding speed is very high so maybe oil speed is very high maybe it is associated with the cooling rate is very high at the same time and rate of the solidification also good in this particular situation and try to promote the kind of the fine structure associated with the oil so we can expect the very fine structure the microstructure is very fine with the we see the grain overall average grain size is very fine, very low uh, in this particular situation now we can do further also um, that uh, that what can be the nucleation happen in a, in a welding process we will try to look into that part also so oil metal nucleation mechanism we see that all course we can we already mentioned that this there is a that this the starts from the this zone and the trailing edge uh, starting with the this uh, solid columnar structure it starts but nucleation is usually all these cases the heterogeneous nucleation process because if you observe in the very first slide i have tried to explain this thing that the weight weightability is very good uh, in this case so that means the uh, very the nucle the energy barrier to start the heterogeneous nucleation process is actually very low so therefore large heterogeneous nucleation starts this particular point and it will try to grow as a in in the form of a columnar and the certain particular the columnar equx columnar dendritic also we can form at the center near the center now if we look into focus only on the nucleation mechanism so how the nucleation occurs in case of the oil solidification then we will try to look into three uh, different aspects one is the growth of the columnar grains is actually interrupted by the formation of the new grains and at the same time so the new grain even the growth of the epitaxial uh, growth of the epitaxial grains is actually interrupted by the formation of the new grains so both are there so columnar epitaxial growth occurs and it is interrupted when there is a new grains come this position it will try to influence the stopping the the further growth of the particular column uh, columnar structure and even epitaxial growth is also interrupted by the formation of the new grain but how the new grains is usually forms in the welding process and in case of the oiling process it is easy to form the formation of the new grains because overall we can see that uh, in the oiling process there is a uh, liquid metal is pulled but there is a high convection current exist within the liquid metal and is assisted by the shielding gas pressure also so there is a circulation of the liquid metal is there so continuous circulation of the with a small oil pool so that actually influence the nucleation mechanism here also so new grains are usually form open equx rather than the columnar grain so when new x usually forms that is mostly at the equx structure because new grains form that several position start the nucleation process at the same time in the several position so when the several position nucleation starts it will try to grow and clearly try to make it more or less equx kind of the structure rather than promoting the kind of the columnar structure 
no so here dendrites we can see that dendrite is try to from the mousse zone because we see observe the in the, in the mousse zone there is a constituency supercooling part is also there and that mousse zone from behind the trailing edge so this part is actually mousse zone here and here the mechanism for the nucleation is the dendrite fragmentation so actually dendrite forms then in presence of the external current convective current that actually uh, promote to uh, uh, create some kind of the fragment den dendrite. So, that dendrite the dendrite fragmentation is basically transported to some other positions and it will try to create some kind of the uh, uh, helps to create the uh, new grains. So, that is the one uh, or from the dendritic fragmentation the new grains is usually from with the minimum amount of the energy barrier that we observe in case of the heterogeneous nucleation process. Apart from this thing there is a grain detachment that is another mechanism we can observe the grain detachment partially melted grains are detached from the this thing and that also acts at the site for the nucleation heterogeneous nucleation process. And heterogeneous nucleation itself is a the mechanism that uh, actually forms you observe uh, in, in case of the oil solidification. We will try to explain these three one is the dendritic fragmentation. So, oil pool convection high convection current is the principal cause of the fragment ability observed the convection current will try to interrupt the, uh, the further growth of the dendrite and it is a fragmentation occurs of the dendrites tips and that is occurs in the mousse zone. And then fragmented dendrites actually carried by the bulk metal oil pool metal and acts as a nucleus. So, fragmented dendrite will carry it through along with the due to the convective current of the liquid. Uh, uh, convection of the liquid metal within the oil pool and that start formation of the new nuclei from or the new grain usually forms from the fragmented uh, dendrites. And this is usually known as the grain refining mechanism. So, grain refining mechanism if we create large amount of the uh, uh, fragmented dendrites so all start at the same time the nucleation process heterogeneous nucleation process and at the same time so many nucleation starts at the in the bulk material. So, it will try to promote uh, kind of the fine grain structure associated with that process. So, this is one mechanism dendritic fragmentation there is another mechanism that is the grain detachment. So, grain detachment in this case of, of course, oil pool current or convection cause partially melted grains detached from the solid liquid in mixture. So, here solid liquid mixtures partial grains is uh, partially uh, developed grain is basically uh, detached from their mixture and they can act as a start for the nucleation and or forming the new grains uh, from the detached uh, grain uh, that we observe here. And of course, here you can see that large part is there at the set it will try to the uh, this trailing edge this is the almost actually this is the mousse zone here and that part is try to form the different uh, nucleation uh, the heterogeneous nucleation it starts. Okay, and that heterogeneous nucleation will try to form the equiac structure and if it is comes from the dendritic fragmentation or from the great detachment part then it will always try to form at the center point the equiac uh, dendritic. Of course, there is other factors also I already explained the steepest temperature gradient is not too high in this particular zone then only this type of the uh, nucleation mechanism acts and it influences the uh, oil solidification. Now, heterogeneous nucleation also we know that liquid metal contain the foreign particles there are other foreign particles also there and that in the oil pool and they actually reduce the critical amount of the energy barrier to start the nucleation process and which is known as the heterogeneous nucleation. So, this all three mechanism heterogeneous nucleation process grain detachment and dendritic fragmentation is basically active in case of the oiling process and it is more prone to occurs because of the oiling conditions as compared to the casting because casting we cannot find out much like oiling process. So, here is the difference in the nucleation mechanism as compared to the casting process is that in oiling process there is a continuous some external substance are acting. So, first thing is that high convection current is created in the in the oiling process as compared to the casting and that also happens with the small oil pool. The oil pool zone is very small as compared to the cast component. So, this is that is the uh, factor that influencing the the mixing up in this thing. So, uh, and different kind of the columnar or equiax kind of the structure is usually forms and mostly that is promoted by the in uh, in terms of the 
nucleation mechanism associated with the uh, welding fusion welding process. Now, what are the effect of the welding parameters on heterogeneous nucleation process? Now, if you look overall look into the welding parameters, how it influence of the heterogeneous nucleation process, we can see that formation of the equiax kind of the structure in the influence by the high heat input and high welding speed. So, heat input is very high, I mean welding power basically the voltage ampere is very high and the welding speed is also good enough that will try to produce kind of the equiaxed grain in a uh, in this case when equiaxed grain means it is a promotes large amount of the heterogeneous nucleation process. Now, here we can see the increase in the heat input and the welding speed both heat input and the welding speed the temperature gradient is actually reduces. So, high heat input and high welding speed is actually reduces the temperature gradient we know which is the one of the solidification parameter this is the solidification mode. So, therefore, G is actually reduces in this uh, particular situation. Now, at the same time when welding speed also increases the solidification rate also increases we observe that if welding speed is very high to comply with the solidification front along with the welding speed the R also increases. So, R also increases. So, in this case both the cases if V increases welding speed increases then the temperature gradient that welding uh, it is a temperature gradient decreases, but growth rate actually increases oil metal growth rate R actually increases. So, therefore, G decreases and R increases both way it actually contribute G by R ratio is actually reduces. G by R ratio should decrease in that case the constant supercooling should be increased. So, G at the low values of the G by R the amount of the constitutional supercooling that means that zone constitutional supercooling zone will be much more uh, uh, at the very lower value of the G by R. So, both the things are there important one is the low value of the G by R and the high amount of the the very high zone of the constitutional supercooling zone is very high both are promote the kind of the equiaxed grain formation uh, that we can observe. So, here just I am a referencing one what we discuss in the last module also we can see that equiax dendritic structure is is promoted if the constitutional supercooling this zone is very high and in that case temperature gradient is also low and when the there is no constitutional supercooling zone that creates the planar kind of the structure and which is not usually not observed in case of the welding process okay so this we can see that is one way equiax dendritic structure is possible to promote if we can keep constant supercooling is much more and G by R ratio is low and this is only possible if the high value of G that means it is usually very high welding speed and uh, uh, sorry low values of the G and associated with the high welding speed low value of the G uh, sorry. Uh, high value of the V and Q high amount of the heat input both actually try to produce the, the, the temperature gradient is low and high values of the V is try to produce the high value of the R. So, that promote low values of the G by R ratio as well as the constant supercooling zone is much more. So, that promotes the equiax kind of the dendritic structure. There is some benefit of to promote the equiax kind of the dend equiax dendritic structure in case of the uh, solidification process because it influence much more on the properties mechanical properties of the solidified component or welded component. And of course, we see that uh, if we follow the G by an R in this, uh, this curve we already discussed this curve. But we see that if cooling rate is very high, we can expect the finer structure. So, therefore, when we compare the solidification uh, of casting and welding process, usually the welding process the this cooling rate is much more than that of the casting. So, when cooling rate is much more, in that case, we can expect the very fine structure, overall fine structure, grain structure uh, uh, in case of the welding is much lower as compared to the uh, casting process. Now, what I can control on the grain structure, what are the different factors is responsible to control the uh, grain structure during the oil solidification. We observe that oil metal microstructure definitely affect the mechanical properties of the uh, structure, but here you observe 
that what what uh, you can try to promote the equi structure because the tensile strength increases the amount of the equi grain increases and the same time equi grain increases the almost isotopic properties to the structure that is also another parameter. So, that is why we will try to promote uh, if we uh, any kind of the uh, isotopic properties in the mechanical properties in the structure then we will try to promote the equiax kind of the structure. Of course, equiax microstructure also influence the other other than the mechanical properties of the material uh, uh, the oil component, but it is always try to promote because if we promote the columnar kind of the structure in that cases we can explore the directional properties. So, there we promote the columnar kind of the structure, but equiax structure almost isotopic properties. At the same time, if it is a fine structure fine structure fine equiax grains actually reduce the suspectivity of the crack oil metal solidification cracking. So, that is another reason during the welding to promote the kind of the fine equiax structure. So, fine equiax structure means the overall uh, size of the grain is more or less same and it is smaller as compared to the bigger structure bigger grain size. And of course, fine grains improves the ductility, fracture, stuffness, all kind of the improvement is basically in, in case of the steel, fine grain structure all actually beneficial to promote the fine grain structure in associated with the oiling process because we can get so many benefits of the in terms of the mechanical properties of a welded component if we try to promote the uh, fine equiaxed grain structure. And we observe the for what condition we can expect this kind of the structure, the analysis we, we, we can see that. Therefore, to obtain the fine grain in the fusion zone zone therefore, definitely if we now we try to look we promote the fine grain in the oil zone. So, what are the different processes we can see the there are different ways to incorporate the fine grain structure in a oiling process. One is the inoculating agent we uh, add it influence the heterogeneous nucleation process or rate of the nucleation can improve. Other is the oil pool string action. So, uh, that means the this somehow if you try to put the oil pool string means that the mixture of the that convective current of the oil pool uh, if we try to promote much more that also influence the the almost equiax kind of the structure and fine structure as well arc oscillation so we can we can uh, periodically oscillate the arc uh, one particular uh, magnitude that also improves the that this uh, kind of the transfer of the heat or transfer of the energy in the in the, in the in that if you fluctuate it then it influence the uh, this kind of the um, this uh, grain structure of the heterogeneous nucleation process associated with the welding even arc pulsation also if you the instead of the continuous current if we create the false arc current uh, that also influence the so basically some part is heating then allowing the cooling so that more pulsation if we create it then it will try to promote kind of the equiax structure uh, and, and apart from this thing stimulated uh, surface nucleus if you promote the surface nucleation process or expedite the surface nucleation process also that actually influence the the heterogeneous nucleation rate of the heterogeneous nucleation process within the oil structure and when you somehow incorporate the rate of the heterogeneous nucleation process much more then it will try to at the, at the create some kind of the equiax structure in case of the uh, oil solidified. Now, uh, once you look into uh, this all the effect of the uh, grain uh, solidification and uh, solidification associated with the welding process and what are the different aspects of the solidification, what are the influence of the process parameter and the solidification. Uh, we can we can understand that in the oil solidification definitely it starts with the columnar structure at the boundary and this thing and very close to the center it will try to promote the equiax structure this is the usual procedure of course if we try to enhance the equiax kind of the structure uh, we can modulate the uh, oil material properties uh, oil uh, process parameter for example high welding speed okay, and very high heat input okay uh, to the structure both are try to promote kind of the uh, this kind of the uh, fine structure or maybe equiax structure and at the same time uh, fine structure will be uh, whether fine or coarse structure it will only be influenced by the uh, rate of the cooling. But G by R ratio if you try to uh, reduce it in a welding process somehow it will try to promote the kind of the equiax structure. But whether it is fine structure or coarse structure that entirely depends on the, the rate of the overall rate of the cooling of the component. But uh, these are the 
simple way uh, the understanding of the uh, solidification uh, well solidification and, and associated only on the fusion rolling process and it helps to get the better understanding promoting some controlling of the gain structure uh, just to understanding the solidification behavior of the welding process. So, next class uh, that is all for today. So, next class I will try to I will try to link the heat transfer mechanism with the oil solidification process and we will try to explain the what we can calculate the heat transfer, the temperature distribution and how can influence the rate of the cooling during the oiling process and which parameter will be responsible for that. That we will discuss in the next class. Thank you very much. Yeah.